So let's go first kind of outline our map or locations. And I'm using just square. It will be much easier to use it after in a world machine. Uh, but you can use it any other shapes, but I would recommend square will make it a little bit easier. So we'll create new layer. We'll take our brush, 100%. And I'm just going create area. And again, I'm just encapsulating players inside one zone because this is not open end map kind of. It's not procedures that they generate as people is going. It's predefined for us inside. And mostly you can create any other ones, but I'm just encapsulating all players that will be inside and create a big mountain surround. Also, let's create some areas maybe right here. Doesn't matter, just any elements. Also, you notice it is black and white. And in most time, the white is a higher altitude, black is lower. So let's go ahead and invert. We'll just put invert on in this case. And that's all. This is our basic input map that we needed with a very rough shape. Of course, we'll add other ones, elements inside the work motion. And I'm going to save this as PNG and TFF. Okay, so when we save, now we can go inside the work machine and start kind of working on this. First step, we need to import the map that we created. So for this one, let's go inside the generator. And you notice right here, we have our file input. We're going to click and input. This is will be input our files. Let's open properties and preload our file. Right here, you can see two our, our files are displayed and I will take TFF because it's less compression. And also at the time when we start inputting, we have it import location. So we have it our width, height, we have it all of these elements that we can specify as well. So for now, let's just go click OK. We'll come back to this. Again, you can anytime reopen and modify. Um, notice we're using don't select absolute path we could it says after refresh every time it's built so if we modify map it will start reading from there all the time so let's go ahead actually check this in just in case if we decide after come back and um use a scale we don't sp uh, specify any of this is mostly for if you have it um the some special file that is have it information inside so we'll go here default all property um we don't care about the interlocation right now and scaling it's fine. So just let's go. Okay. Again, remember we draw by the head next. This is if you look on the preview right here, this is what we have. Okay. Let's click actually an hour preview. And this is what we imported. Of course, they're super tall, but it is very rough shape. What do we have it next? We want to apply some randomness to this. And the best way to do it is just we'll go ahead, create advanced Perlin, and we'll take the primary output from here. We'll go to the shape guide and you can see we already apply it. And also we'll take shape and apply to our mask input. Okay, if we preview at this time, you can see we did apply a little bit change right as edges, but overall it's still quite a bit high. So to reduce some of the height of this, we actually need to modify and control this input. To do this, we can do it through the filters by going and select our the clamp node. So let's go ahead, select to the clamp node. And as example, you can preview on a map when we clamp we can actually specify how high and low we want it so we'll just bring a little bit lower maybe around this way you can also try to clip other ones but i think that if we just reducing reduce going right there it will be work very okay we don't and this normalization won't work so we'll just bring a little bit down click ok and let's put on a clipping so at this point, you can see we are brought a little bit down our mountains. And again, this is up to um, how much you want to create. However, the lines, it does not work very well for our mountains. 
we need a little bit maybe more smoother work with them for this we actually want to add some blur filtering and we'll just take one go right here place it and let's from this point connect our blur filter and we can blur now as we blurring in preview you can see how it's changed as we're changing blurring you can see some elements become not as tall as sharp but that is okay because if we're going to increase this we always can go in a clamp and at this point increase our climbing um, one thing what I recommend for you it's a right click and lock preview device so in this case if we go and clamp and start modifying we still see after our blur so just a little bit helpful to preview okay let's pop up a little bit higher let's remove our lock Okay, let's preview at this point and here is we have it our basic basic layout at this moment with the very rough shapes you know let, let me change sun position lighting a little bit okay but it is already look somewhat a little bit more natural position um, we could increase even more flatness or in some area like right here we start losing some elements to do this again we can go inside the our clam node okay and we can bring even higher okay let's go click OK and it's bring a little bit up okay let's go to our blur And we'll see if we increase or decrease yeah maybe just a little bit okay so at this point we created blur but what if we needed to create even stronger kind of flat and go up so in the next tutorial we'll look how we can add additional nodes to modify and create more smoother um, ramping going towards our mount